A top American official has stated that the U.S. Army is preparing for any potential conflict with China by focusing on bases, logistics, and long-range missiles. This is probably one of the most straightforward and clear statements delivered from the American side and came from U.S. Army Secretary Christine Wormuth. Viewers may note that Wormuth was appointed Secretary of the Army on May 28, 2021, becoming the first woman to hold the Army's top civilian post. During the discussion in a virtual event hosted by the Washington, D.C.-based think tank Center for International Strategic Studies CSIS, she identified five core tasks for the U.S. Army Indo-Pacific conflict that are designed to counter China. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. Army Secretary has delivered a blunt message to China. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support, so grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Christine Wormuth said that economic pressure and diplomacy are the best tools in preventing the two nations' forces from going kinetic. She also emphasized that the U.S. needs to ensure that Chinese President Xi Jinping and other leaders think twice before launching an attack on Taiwan or taking reckless action in the South China Sea. Wormuth said the U.S. faces many China-related strategic challenges in the Indo-Pacific, including territorial claims over the Senkaku Islands in East China Sea, military aircraft intrusions into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, and Beijing's militarization of the South China Sea. The U.S. Army Secretary recommended that the U.S. and China break away from a new Cold War framework and maintain bilateral communication to avoid escalating tensions. She emphasized that the promotion of U.S.-Taiwan defense cooperation is the best way to avoid conflict. She added the top priority for the U.S is to avoid a hot war in the Taiwan Strait, and the best way to achieve this goal is to make sure its deterrence is so strong that Chinese leader Xi Jinping does not dare to try to take Taiwan by force. The U.S. Army Secretary said that the U.S. Army will have five core tasks in the Indo-Pacific theater which it can accomplish without a dramatic expansion of its permanent presence. 1. Securing and establishing joint bases and staging areas for air and naval forces. It will also be prepared to provide integrated air and missile defense and quick reaction forces. This makes the U.S. Army the linchpin service for the joint force, she said. Two. The U.S. Army will operate much of the backbone of a secure communication network and create supply chain networks to forces distributed throughout the region. It will also maintain stockpiles of munitions and forward arming and refueling points. 3. The U.S. Army will also help synchronize, sustain, and defend operations through a scalable joint headquarters. 4. Providing ground-based fires such as hypersonic weapons, mid-range missiles, and precision strike missiles. All three of these will be deployed starting in 2023. These weapons would likely initially be based in U.S. territory, but the State Department and the Pentagon are talking to close allies about overseas locations. She said, We will be able to interdict fires across sea lines of communication 
suppress enemy air defense, and provide counter-fires against mobile targets. 5. The U.S. Army will counterattack with infantry and aviation to restore the territorial integrity of our allies and partners. While commentary from the successive U.S. administrations has been guarded, things are changing with a more combative and blunt tone being used now. This is partly because of Chinese action on the ground, as well as its posturing with wolf-warrior diplomacy. Wolf-warrior diplomacy describes an aggressive style of diplomacy adopted by Chinese diplomats in the 21st century under Chinese leader Xi Jinping's administration. The term was coined from a Rambo-style Chinese action film, Wolf Warrior II. Wolf Warrior diplomacy is confrontational and combative, with its proponents loudly denouncing any criticism of China on social media and in interviews. As an attempt to gain discourse power in international politics, Wolf Warrior diplomacy forms one part of a new foreign policy strategy called Xi Jinping's major country diplomacy, which has legitimized a more active role for China on the world stage, including engaging in open ideological competition with the West. According to an October 14th Lockheed Martin statement, the U.S. Army's Precision Strike Missile, or PRSM, broke its distance record in a flight test at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, October 13th. The company did not disclose the distance the PRSM traveled in its flight test, but the goal of the test was to see exactly how far the missile can travel beyond its previous set requirement of 499 kilometers or 310 miles. PRSM was initially meant only for surface-to-surface -surface warfare and was being designed to take on targets such as air defenses and troop fortifications, but is now being configured with an advanced targeting multi-mode seeker that will enable it to engage moving targets, including rivals, surface combatants, and seas. Progress is being made in the domain of hypersonic missiles, too. There are also experiments going on with land-launched Tomahawk for land attack and anti-ship missions. The U.S. has bases like Okinawa and Guam, which can be launching areas for these weapons and make things extremely difficult for the Chinese military when it comes to invading Taiwan, wresting control of Japanese claimed islands, or dominating the South China Sea. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.